the, the, the nice elements, or the great element about Farscape as opposed to any other science fiction show, if we've left a stamp anywhere, if we've left a stamp, we've taken a kind of a clean kind of show that Star Trek is, twisted around, twisted it inside out, and you know, and made it dirty. You know, muddied it up, and uh, and also realized that really it was a ship full of misfits. Grace, come here. Why? Closer. This is secret. If you try anything, closer. If you don't have misfits that are always constantly at each other's throats then you don't have friction, and therefore you don't have drama. Don't Name. Drama. Uh. It's, uh, John Crichton. And where are you from? John Crichton. Sir, he claims to be a human from a planet called Earth, but he's shown himself to be... To be what, Officer Sun? A clever imposter, an accomplice to a ship full of escaping prisoners. My brother's murderer. It's been a wonderful journey working on Captain Christ. The one promise I made to myself was that I would not make him a one-dimensional character. I would make him as complex and as passionate as I could, given the confines. And uh, the wonderful part about that is I think all the writers kind of saw what I was doing and added to that, you know, and uh, he became a very complex character. And, and I think, well, for me, one of the... Uh, kind of greatest roles I've played to date. The thing about Kreis is that whenever he was quiet, that's when, as an audience, you've got to start worrying. Because you never knew what the heck he was going to you know, do next. Talon? Intruder. And it was wonderful to play that. The, the, the whole thing for me, right from the beginning, was I was... I wanted to be very, very physical with, with Kreis. My whole reason for doing that was so that when the moments were quiet, I could really just stop everything and just sit there in the scene, and not talk, or just look and just listen. Have you given any thought to my previous proposal. First up in the first season, um, and especially with the premiere, he's fairly one-dimensional. He's just a driven man. We are going after the Leviathan. But, sir, a regulation... That is a direct order, Lieutenant. And you have no idea where he comes from and what his background is and what he's thinking. What began to change for me and or as the actor and also for the character is one scene at the end of season one where Chris is sitting down behind bars talking to oh, Crichton yes, okay. in a hallway. Moya. Riding our ass. And then you get to see a little chink in there. I understand you didn't mean to kill my brother. It was an accident. I realize that now as I look back and try to understand it all. Do you have any idea what you put me through? All of us through? I thought it was about my brother. It should have been about my brother. Somewhere along the way, my priorities decayed. I realized I'd become more concerned with my own image and career. It was a lovely scene because we're just sitting, looking at each other and just Thank talking. You. And that moment for me, both as an actor and now also shaping the character, that was the m defining moment where you, we could actually begin to see into Grace. In season two and season three, you know, I start to have this relationship with, with Aaron Soon. I think she would have been his ideal partner Roger, in crime, Roger, you know, as it were. Don't forget I have to give Crichton a reason for my absence. He still has no knowledge of our arrangement? None. It might facilitate matters if you explain to him. No. Eventually, you'll have to. Only when it's too late for him to interfere. 
but I don't really think that he would have found love with her. Grace, we were going to share command of Talon. Talon. Chose otherwise. He needs both of us. No. We no longer need you. Talon can only have one, Master. You may return to Moya. I will not. She makes Grace understand about Talon. You can't command a Leviathan, you can only persuade. Talon is part Leviathan, part peacekeeper. He was designed to take orders. Why don't you let me talk to him? So it's kind of like you're prying open this, this clam and just prying it very, very gently. And the key to, to, to Grace is Talon. But it happened through your insulin. And it's about allowing emotion to come in. He begins to think um, about other people. He begins to think of his relationship with this, this hybrid ship, which is like, you know, begins to be like an errant kid. There's no reason to be afraid. I'm here. So is Grace. Talon, we want to help you, please. So in a way, he kind of did find a love, a father, kind of son relationship, um, an irreverent son, but the son nevertheless. This is how the peacekeepers treat their own. You, me, Officer Sun. But we are alike now, orphaned from all we ever knew. We have only one another to rely upon. If Christ had a fault in there, he was probably blinded by revenge. I am here, Crichton. To talk. To kill you. As we know in human beings, it's a passion that can just drive you, you know, mad. Hey. And you can't see clearly, you can't think clearly. If anything, it clouded his logic. You think I attacked your brother? Oh, yeah. I popped into the middle of a giant space battle and decided to go one on one with a total stranger in a far superior ship. Does that make any sense? You rammed his prowler. You ran into me. You killed him. It was an accident. Why do you keep blaming me? I did everything I could to avoid him. Chris hated the fact that uh, Scorpy put him in the Aurora chair. Uh, who is that? <laughs> My father. Turn it off! Don't you like your past, Grace? Turn it off! The Aurora chair was not a good experience for him. And actually, it was very funny. The day that I actually sat in the Aurora chair, I had this, this idea that if you could be burnt by napalm, that would be the level of pain. So that's what I was thinking about as an actor. And I put myself on that course and, uh, and uh, when, when we rolled camera, uh, I just let go. And what happened was, on the third revolution, all the lights blew. <laughs> and the whole studio went boom. And, um, and that was an amazing moment, actually, I'll never forget. <laughs> Listen, we are all on the same team. We all want this ship destroyed. And the only way to do that is with Talon. Grace is proposing that he and Talon starburst while still inside the command carrier hangar. The carrier will collapse upon itself. Outer decks first. Central core last. Where do we meet up with you and Talon? You don't. Starburst in a confined space where the energy can't dissipate. be the hero's death that Talon deserves. The great payoff at the end of uh, season three, where I stand there in Talon and I say, Starburst. That moment where I'm going, I'm right deep in your heart, right in, the, in your center right now, to uh, Scorpius, and Scorpius knows exactly what's about to happen. And that for me, um, in terms of you know, playing Crace as the actor and also the, real, the full evolution of his arc for me was a great joy.